All right. Give me a one, two, three, clap. One, two, three. Perfect. All right, here we go. What's your name? How old are you? And where is home? My name's Jeremy Mann. I've turned 25 at least twice. And home is a sweet home all about. In what ways has metal detecting enhanced your understanding or feelings of your local history? Oh, quite a bit. Uh, changed my perspective quite a bit on the outcomes after the Civil War. Um, that, was, that was a good bit of history I've learned about back home that I never knew. So it impacted my life probably in a big way because it changed what I believed about the past. Mom, well, you know, the Yankees stayed 10 years after the surrender of Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia. They spent 10 years in Dable with the entirety of the town that I'm from under martial law. So that definitely changes your perspective So, You know, I respect the people that lived in that time a lot more from Dable for what they had to go through, obviously occupied, obviously um, under house law, um, not able to go about their day as they please as free people. Can you tell me about a time when metal detecting provided a sense of solace or served as a form of therapy for you? Literally metal detecting served as a form of therapy for me from the first day I started. Um, I was 32 years old. I had just had my second back surgery. It was a spinal fusion. And I was needing physical therapy, um, like most people that go through those kind of surgeries. And uh, physical therapy just wouldn't work for me at the doctor's office. It was, and the, and the doctor suggested I find something that put me through the range of motions that he put me through, that I enjoy. And uh, my wife always loved to metal detect her, and her dad sometimes would go metal detecting. She had talked about it for years, and we decided to ride uh, to Clay County, where there was a little dealer up in the top of a, um, an old hardware store, and they sold metal detectors, and we bought our first metal detector there. And uh, In the beginning, I could only go for 30 minutes at a time, you know, dig a couple targets. She'd come help me. And over the years, uh, and more surgeries would follow, and it would become even more important to me. And over the years, I slowly built myself up enough. There's always a price I pay on the backside of everything I do, every trip I make, every video you watch that's mine. There's a price I pay, but it's worth it. You made that statement to me once before that uh, metal detecting made you feel relevant and of use. Can you expand on that a little bit? You know, uh, I slowly got really, really good with the equipment. Um, I'd buy, every chance I had, I would buy a metal detector, all kinds of brands. And I'd fool with them a lot, and got to where I enjoyed fooling around some in the test gardens, and uh, I got to where I could translate some of the information I was getting out into the field. And as I got better at it, uh, I'd take friends with me, and it, it just, it makes you feel better uh, when you can help somebody else. and. And sometimes when you're disabled in life, uh, you feel like somebody's always helping you. I know that your life went in a really dark place. You lost a lot. I did. And Everything. Metal detecting kind of gave that, gave you an avenue to get that back. It did. It gave me an opening, uh, a, like we were talking about, it gave me a purpose. And at the same time, it gave me the physical therapy that was necessary for my physical recovery. But it also greatly helped, and I didn't even realize it at the time, with my mental recovery. There's a lot of mental scars you get when you go through tragedy and trauma in your body, and you don't even know you have those scars. And metal detecting helped me a lot with those scars. Can you share a story about a connection or bond you formed with another person through metal detecting, and maybe how that relationship has enhanced uh, you're the, just the hobby of metal detecting. Ironically, um, I'm talking to one of the guys right now that I met, um, you, and uh, just 
besides being a um, a really good metal detector, uh, you kind of took me under your wing. Help help me figure out some things on the video side of all of it, and uh, also I can't count the times we have bumped ideas uh, and had machine talks and all that and I'd, I'd have to include uh, really a lot of people just you meet so many people uh, and it seems like each one of them in their own little way change you and uh, impact the hobby every one of us I think a lot of the places I go I take friends uh, we go we go quite regular together but there are times that I just want to go down to the local park and put the headphones on, tune the rest of the world completely out. I mean, because we walk around and a little crazy all day, every day. I think we all do. And uh, sometimes just to unplug from that world. Because when you plug the headphones in the back of that metal detector, everything else in the world goes away. At least for a little while. I hope to see more young people get involved. I've noticed the hobby's really grown. Uh, and there has been a lot of young people, but I hope to see more. You know, it's always good to see my grandkids sooner or later are going to be old enough. And as soon as they're able, I'm going to try to move them over. It's the connection. It's the connection to your past. And your past is the expressed uh, life lived of everybody that came before you. And sometimes when you find a coin in a yard that's been under the ground for over 100 years, and in that moment, you're the only person to touch that since over a hundred years ago. You've got three grandbabies? Five. Five grandbabies? Five. Wow, okay. So talk about um, what you might hope that one of those grandbabies, or maybe all those grandbabies, might think about, you know, metal detecting with Paw Paw. Well, I'm hoping that as when they go with me, it'll just be that personal time together, regardless of what we find, because you know, kids are, uh, you can find a hot wheel and and set a kid's world just ablaze with happiness because they love stuff but that connection that you might not get in a regular daily environment with grandfather and grandchild things coming and going there's a connection you can get out there in the woods out in the wild it gets the kids outside too what's your answer to somebody who says where's the new product that fisher has it's coming um, that's all I know and until it gets here I still have some of the best equipment money can buy literally and I'll put I'll put my f-75 up against anything on the market still it's versatile it can be set up for uh, dense iron or good depth in between it's just got a lot of versatility and the main thing is you're not spending the whole day adjusting equipment Spend the day metal detecting. Are there advantages to single frequency over these multi frequency units? I tell people all the time the multi frequency to me it shines the brightest on the beach. Um, and there are other conditions, um, really adverse uh, soil conditions. But where I live and where I'm from, multi frequency and single frequency both being used side by side for more than just a week or two. I'm talking years uh, I just have better results even using a multi-frequency machine in single frequency when I'm hunting thick iron and that's what I hunt uh, it's thick iron it's not as important places like the lake where I hunt both of them perform but in the iron I, I've always said multi is better on the beach uh, and single frequencies just always shine to me in the iron so is there anything else you'd like to say or Ask. I'm a, I'll say this, whether you use it or not, it's fine. I'm extremely proud to be from America, extremely proud to swing an American made product, and I'll continue to do so as long as I'm metal detect. Perfect. Thank you.